Uh, Ted, you want to take it away? Well, uh, yeah, thank you. And, and listen, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much uh, for being here. It really great, greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you to our co-sponsors, Vanderbilt Medical Center and the, the Vanderbilt Center for Better Health for this awesome, awesome setting. This is pretty cool. Uh, and with all respect to Michael, I hope you all bought your sneakers. Uh, although your sneakers <laughs> wouldn't work today, right? But, but uh, we're going to have a highly interactive uh, working session, a couple of formal presentations, uh, and uh, Tom will kind of give us a, a much more uh, in-depth indication of how the day should go. Uh, but this is all about talking uh, and working and planning <coughs> and implementing the transformation of healthcare. Um, so with that, I'd like to just start with, again, my view, I suppose, or my version of uh, what we're here to do. So, Andy Grove, the former chairman uh, and uh, founder of Intel, called it inflection points. I call it the spark, but it's effectively a confluence of things that occur uh, to cause industries to change the game. All right, so I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, Thomas Watson Sr. decided that his tabulating machine back in the 50s had some business application. Right, and IBM became IBM. You know, a few years later, actually probably like 25 years later, uh, Bill Gates got his hands on DOS from IBM and decided that if you put a human to machine interface on top of DOS, right, you could change the world. And indeed, that spark happened. And there are numerous other examples. You've got, uh, you know, the entire travel industry was changed by uh, a capacity management system called Sabre. Uh, you've got uh, you know the introduction of uh, ATMs, which literally changed the banking industry. And not because you get your money out of a machine, certainly that's the uh, manifestation, but the networks that were designed around that, you know, had the open, the standard, the abilities to transfer and share information. You know, more recent, uh, just a little bit less than uh, 20 years ago, uh, the financial services industry, Goldman Sachs, made an investment in a small company um, called Tibco and you know, invested in their enterprise service bus. That is basically our, uh, our, our background is TIPCO. And today, the financial services industry you know, trades three, four, five hundred points on the big boards a day. Whereas 10, 15 years ago, that would be very traumatic, very hard to do. So those are indications, and there are many, many, many more you can, we can come up with, of a spark of change. Something that you know, is welled up by uh, a pent up set of knowledge and understanding about what needs to happen, the availability of technology to make that vision happen, but it always takes somebody or something to make it all happen, right? Well, my vision is that's the HITP. And you know, we kicked off HITP last July. Uh, our founding members are gonna put up a bunch of our logos, many of which are here back here today. Now we have new players on the team. And the real concept is to create that spark to create that element of change, right? To build the ecosystem within ourselves. It's a business model within itself, right? And I like to use the, the, the term, you know, to build a symbiotic relationship between us and the industry. So it's a win-win for you as you take the risk and step forward as leaders and change the world, right? You also win in terms of your enterprise value, advance your own gains respectively, whatever your agenda uh, as you, <coughs> you and your senior executives agree. So thank you very much. I call this a deeper dive. So we're going to take a framework, and I'm going to show you that framework in a few minutes that we developed in, Ju in July of last year as a group, and then we're going to drill down into it with the support of our, our co-sponsors here at the, uh, the, the CDH, Center for Better Health. So our founding members, not going to dwell on this, uh, their logo is on the board here, again, many of which are back here today. You know, we met for, again, a very similar timing, uh, you know, it's a day and a half of that exercise in Chicago, center of the country. <clears throat> we worked on a number of things, pardon me, worked on a number of things together. Again, that's sort of the launching pad for today's discussion. Um, this is representative of who's here today, right? And, and you're all C-suite executives, you're all people with influential positions in your organizations, and as importantly, your, your organizations are influential in the business, in the industry of healthcare, right? So we can do something. This is really what we're here to talk about, to do. Many of the uh, organizations that joined us in July on this journey have already embraced and already have runway behind them in terms of implementing solutions 
consistent with our theories and our practices that we discuss within HITP. And they're here today to talk to you, and uh, they'll, they'll be uh, shared with you by Jack Starmer uh, and, uh, and Paul Chang, who are here today with respect to, uh, from the Vanderbilt Center, uh, Vanderbilt Medical Center and the University of Chicago Medicine. They'll be talking about their game plans, again, runway behind them, progress and so on and so forth. We also have Fred Holston from Middle Mountain, here to talk to us about some really cool things there, sense of urgency, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to, you know, share with each other how how we will be designing and implementing, and again, the word disruptive gets, you know, misused and abused and all that other good stuff, but really, truly disruptive solutions, all right? In this case, fueled, enabled by advanced technology, stuff that's available today, all right? Not bleeding edge by any means, However, for healthcare, leading edge, right? And <clears throat> this is really uh, indicative of what I what I mean by creating the symbiosis, right? A win-win opportunity for you, right, to be part of the spark of transformation of the industry, for your enterprise to gain value and progress along your journey as you have decided respectively, right? And then within this group, for sharing, for collaborating, for learning and growing together. I, that's what this is all about. In July, we heard determined that we would uh, have a, a high degree of focus, and that's one thing you will know. This group is a focused group. We're not going to get together, you know, and commiserate about what might happen on the Hill in D.C. or what might happen with regards to other regulatory issues and so on. So we have to be cognizant of those for sure. Uh, but I'll share an opinion. We, you know, we can debate this, and if you disagree, but oftentimes I think that that diffuses focus from a business standpoint, from an ability standpoint, from a do it standpoint. All right, so we're going to focus on two key elements of change. First, first of which I guess could be summarized by consumerism. All right, we're going to take a look at how we can be the spark, the catalyst of change for how consumers buy and use healthcare. All right, that has a myriad of uh, things that we can talk about. We've got the insurance exchanges that are about to launch and the maturity of those over time. What do we see? What's the vision for that? Uh, we as consumers, we are able to have access to transparent information today on almost every other emotional purchase, and it's emotional because it's a purchase, right? Spending money is an emotional uh, behavior in humans, right? So in healthcare, you've got a double emotion. You've got not only it's a financial decision, but you also have the decision to make about care being done to you and or your family. It's a highly emotional decision, right? And, 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 and in a paradox sense, paradoxical sense, you know, we have very limited information as consumers. We have very little choice in terms of determining value and quality for us in context of what I need today, whether it's buying insurance policy or whether it's going to a clinical practitioner for something on your foot or other parts of your body or your, or your daughters or your child or your wife, right? So, look, that's a problem and we're going to fix that. The second is influencing clinical outcomes. The word influence Right? I mean, that, it just means basically instead of waiting for something to happen and then trending it and analyzing it and then trying to inculcate changes in the process for trying to fix it in the future, right? we're going to focus on how to leverage technology to influence the outcome before it happens. Right? The ability to do that, the ability to move information, to collate information, to have a comprehensive view exists today. It's being used every day in other industries. And this organization uh, already has progress. Right? Again, that's one of the reports that we'll hear today already has progress towards this end. It's exciting, uh, and it's just the beginning. So how are we going to do this? Well, it starts off with learning. Right? It's a group learning exercise. You're all experts in your own field. We have a, a, a large and vast uh, set of members in our group, not just the folks here today, but again, the, uh, the concentric circle beyond, the rest of our participating members who have agreed to continue to communicate with us and hopefully will be here with us in November when we have our second session of this year to join us in these conversations. Um, but even more so now with our partnership and our sponsorship by the, the Center for Better Health, the education, the material that you're all intrigued to be on. There are people already asking, you know, can I get copies of this? And I said, well, you got to talk to Tom. And so the education of what it could be Right, so we're going to flood you with thoughts. We're going to provoke your, uh, your, kind of your comfort zones a bit today 
with information, with knowledge, and then in a continuous basis amongst each other. At last night's dinner at the table, I'm sure there was some vigorous conversation, because at ours there was, and it wasn't just about the cheesecake, which was pretty good, right? Uh, it was about what can we do? How can we do it? Right? And the spirit within this group, the, the passion within this group, the vision within this group, and I've spoken with each and every one of you, and I've worked with many of you, is inspiring. And you know, it's that's what it takes. Leadership, commitment, teamwork, right? And then a facilitation kind of organization, and we believe that's HITP. Right? Just mentioned all this stuff. Contextual orientation, as I mentioned here, and you're gonna hear a lot about context today. It's really what it means to you, George, and you, Susan, and you, Paul, and David, and Michael. Right? What does it mean to you, and what does it mean to HITP? Right? What does it mean to the industry? So in concentric circles, building out context. Right? But it has to start with you because if it's not a win for you, if it's not a valued uh, proposition for you, it's not gonna fly. We believe it is. Right? We're setting priorities. We're going to give you meaningful solution, design, because you're gonna help us design it. It's gonna be yours. Your fingerprints will be all over it. And also your colleagues and peers will be there with you developing this. I mentioned market movers. You saw the logos. You know who you are. We've got Intermountain Health. We've got Amenesis, and if I don't mention your organization, it doesn't mean we've got Pinnacle Health, we've got Vanderbilt, we've got University of Chicago Medicine, we've got Med Solutions, right? We've got WePro, we've got organizations, we've got hymns in the room, all right? We've got organizations that have it, that get it, and can make it happen. Independence Blue Cross, all right? Market movers. We're going to talk about how you might implement it so you minimize your risk. So it's not just, hey, here's what you should do. It's also going to be, here's a methodology that's been proven over and over again for decades about how organizations have not only driven value into their enterprise, but have also taken the risk and stepped forward as a leader, changed the industry, and have capitalized on that and changed the world. <coughs> the expected outcomes. Back to that value package. Right? Actionable use cases. I believe... Uh, there's probably not many people in this room uh, that I'm pretty sure there's every, everyone in this room I have had a conversation as, most, as recently yesterday with Kelly Blair from Med Solutions about use cases. I understand all this stuff, there's some cool stuff available I can use, but how do I make it real for my company today and get on a path so I can optimize that over time and continue the leadership role that Med Solutions is pursuing, continue the leadership role that University of Chicago is pursuing, right? Actionable use cases coming out of this organization. Collaborative implementations. Right? We've already had meetings within ourselves, right? Jack was kind enough to visit with the Intermountain people at, in Salt Lake City uh, just a few months ago, two months ago actually, right? We're spending time sharing information together, right? Eric and I and Paul get together every six weeks and we stay in contact with projects and implementation, right? So there's this collaboration going on. We're gonna build that up even more as an organization. We think that there's lots of value in that. It seems to be uh, sticking because there's a lot of a lot of pull going on, which is very exciting to us. And extensible roadmaps. Once you start on the path, right, this organization can be your guiding light, right, to continued success, to continued value, right, to continue transformative vision. Just a little bit on the process. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this today because I know Tom's going to walk us through it. But this is what you should expect. We're not going to talk about projects right, that are I like to call hitting home runs. We're not going to swing for the fences here. Uh, we have a very, very inspirational vision that's way out here, right? If you think about the vision being out over time, we're going to transform the industry, okay? But we're also going to be pragmatists in that we're going to deliver value to you along the way. But we're also going to show you how to shortcut the path to that goal, to that delivery of value, and still be creative towards your vision, right? It's a process that will allow us to have rapid alignment within our group today. All right, we're going to get a whole bunch of ideas out of the first exercise, of which there will be many. We'll distill it down. We'll come down to some agreements. Right? We'll have all of the inputs considered and shared. And then there's a speed to a solution element here, right? which is, again, all about something I call ASD. I think Tom and the, the, the Center for Better Health has a different term for it there. They're basically the creators of this whole thing. Uh, but this concept and this process has been mimicked. You can even see the whiteboard kind of thing. These cartoons on the web that are available has this codified process. It's been proven before. It's done over and over again in this room with leaders of the industry. So let's talk a little bit about this model called time value pacing. And it's sort of a mishmash. It's a mashup of uh, a Harvard Business School teaching process called time value, uh, time pacing. Uh, it was written up in the Harvard Business Review, I think, in 19. 89, something like that. Um, 
preprints available. Um, and it really took a look at a number of organizations, 3M, Starbucks, Intel, etc., on how those organizations embarked on a journey right, of a future vision, managed their markets, and then also managed the rhythm with which change occurred. Very important. Right, let me talk a little bit about this. So, uh, Intel is, is one of the organizations that's mentioned in this, in this, uh, in this document. Um, so Intel said, you know, Dr. Moore said, look, you know, the size of a chip is going to decrease and it, the speed is going to increase double every year. I think it's something like that, right? Just to kind of paraphrase Moore's law. Okay, well, guess what that was? That was a proclamation. There was no science behind that. And Andy Grove in his book, Only the Paranoid Survive, admits that to some degree. He cannot completely open his kimono saying we faked it, but he does indicate or intimate, is a better term, that that's what they did. They sat in a room, they got a bunch of smart people together, they had a vision, they inspired, they motivated, and they went for it. Sound familiar? Right? So, and they say, look, every couple of years, so what happened was, as they made that proclamation, the industry says, uh-oh, right, what's going to happen? Andy and his team, the chairman, the founder of Intel, already had in motion factories, markets, distribution networks, his internal organization already planned on a frequency that was laid out ahead of time, and just like rowing a boat, just like sculling, everybody's pulling at the same time, organizing, he capitalized on the market, he built the market, and no one caught up, but they eventually did, right? but we're talking about after the S-curve was pretty much exhausted, right? and you know it. Another example, Apple, right? I mean, who knew? Right? I mean, okay, telephones is pretty cool, and so on and so forth, I like to use the, the iPad, and I, uh, you know, I have a, Pretty long background and old dude, right? So, but I was spent a number of years at IBM Corporation, and now I have a, I have the IBM ThinkPad in my DNA, right? And we were talking about DNA at the table last night, so I hope that no one checked my DNA strand. But anyway, <laughs> uh, it's in there, trust me. But it's like this little, little, little pointy thing in there. But anyway, um, and I never thought I would use an iPad. Two years ago, I'm in Best Buy buying this actually. Right, so the guy's up on the shelf trying to get it down. He's got this little picker thing, and as he's doing that, you know, I'm like, okay. So I just touched the, the iPad. I just touched it. Right, and about 20 minutes later, it's another thousand dollars gone. I don't want that. Everything you can buy, you know, all the bells and whistles and the megabytes and gigabytes, the whole, you know, whatever. It was really, and I, you know, and I'm stuck on it. I mean, I'm like thinking, how can I? At home, we got our music going. We got the whole lights thing. You know, everything. Now, you know it. On the airplane, I don't travel with magazines and newspapers anymore. I just, it's all there. And there's more coming. Who knew? Well, guess what? Steve Jobs followed the same process. I, he knew I, that he had to get phones and iPad 1, iPad 2. This was all done ahead of time and planned out. The rhythm and the frequency was done ahead of time. And how do I know this? Well, because I spent time with Steve Jobs and with Howard Schultz. I was at Starbucks for a number of years. We did the same thing at Starbucks, how many stores a day is what we had planned out, right? We went from one and a half to five stores a day opening, right, which, using this model. Not to dwell on it, but that's sort of what we're talking about here, right? So sort of how do we launch and we've launched, and we're gonna share with you what that means, right? We're gonna share with what is that beachhead, what is that beachhead that kind of keeps us solid in the innovative space, right, that's safe for you, because your enterprise gains value out of it, but again, it's accretive towards our future vision of changing the industry, of transforming how care is delivered, how care is bought and used, the quality of care, the value, right? And it'll be in the optimized speed, the maximized value as you define it, not somebody else, right? It's not a sales pitch, this is what's occurred, this is if you embrace this, it can work for you, we believe, it's worked for others, right? And it allows you to manage risk. Well, how does that do that? Well, certainly by breaking up your vision into smaller components, Right, you're only exposing yourself to a small piece of the game. If something goes wrong, like a market change occurs, or other dynamics with regards to your business, you're acquired, you acquire, right? so new technology breaks on the forefront, so on and so forth, you're able to, as you move along your continuum, inculcate that new knowledge into your next step and continue moving forward, continue watching forward, continue making progress uh, towards your game. This works, folks, this is the model. We spent time in July looking at this model. So to talk about how people, consumers buy and use healthcare, this is sort of a summary of our launch beachhead transformational model. Right? Roughly frequency is about a year. 
So we'll, we're kind of roughly looking at a three-year frequency here. I think that's pretty consistent with our, our game plan today, right, Tom? We're going to be looking at a three-year game. Okay, so we're going to put some meat on the bones through the exercises to this today. But, I mean, again, this is distilled up. So, again, some of this is going to be, you know, a little high level. A little, okay, I know that, Ted. But how about a Dell model for buying your benefit plan? Right? Dell model meaning I can choose my modem. I can choose my screen. But how about if I, you know, I choose my deductible? I can choose, you know, my physician network. I can choose, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Right? That would be pretty cool. I believe that's coming. Not the first iteration of our insurance exchanges this fall. I think it will be here next year. In fact, actually, me and a couple of play players in the room are going to be part of that, right? For me, we're going to be part, we're going to be driving that. Because we believe that that model will stick, we believe consumer involvement will grow with that, and we believe once we're on that path, that we'll become a trusted source of information they can use. We'll become an, a trusted source of how you recapture, retain customers for life. And we believe we'll be part of, right, modifying behavior. Today, the retail industry modifies your behavior every single day. Whether it's you or a member of your family, if you deal with organizations like Amazon or Macy's or what have you, they're modifying your behavior. Whether you like it or not. Airlines do it. Hospitality industry does it. Right? Heck, even the package movement organizations that UPS and FedEx modify our behavior. It's like, oh, just FedEx it. Right? That's a modified behavior. It changes your mindset. <coughs> we believe that this is the, the sort of the bones that we'll put skin and muscle around for how, changing how people buy and sell care. Influencing clinical outcomes. This is where we have our most progress. And we'll hear about that today. Some exciting stuff going on. We're well within the launch range. And in fact, Jack and his team here at, at Vanderbilt Medical Center have this model, this time value model going on. He's got 90 day frequencies, right, where he's delivering. Paul Chang and Eric Yablanca have a model where they're free, they're moving forward, they're taking care of their tactical and their strategic initiatives together, accretive towards their goal. We have progress to share with you. Again, pretty high level stuff. We're going to hear a lot of detail today from our colleagues. But how about clinical evidence base in memory? And that criteria is used on decision basis when you're making decisions on levels of care. How about that? That would be pretty cool. That's happening today. Right? How about us moving towards optimizing, you know, wellness delivery? Right? by coordinating care across a continuum, right, where those decisions are being made by fact, by information, in context, for that exact patient at that moment. How about that? That's easy. We could do that. Okay? How about us aiming towards managing population segments and modifying behavior so people make the better lifestyle choices? More than 50% of the population in the United States today, and I think that's pretty consistent across the world, maybe, maybe not, there's some variance, uh, variance uh, uh, as you leave this, uh, you know, the domestic United States <coughs> with this statistic. But it's clearly in the United States, more than 50% of the people dealing with a chronic disease, many of those have multiple comorbid situations going on. Uh, a large portion of that population right, has those diseases or disease because of a lifestyle choice somewhere, somewhere in their life. Uh, we believe the future of healthcare includes activating the consumers. So the call to action is we are here, right? We're going to create a whole bunch of great ideas today, real, meaningful, actionable ideas. And just like some of our colleagues in July, to continue their progress, but just like our colleagues embrace the opportunity, right, to, to select an idea or two, we're actually going to put you in an exercise where you do select a couple of ideas and commit, at least for today or tomorrow, that you're going to go do it. Conduct some due diligence. Decide on how you're going to solve the problem. Get into your early stage. When we meet back here in November, be up here in front sharing with your colleagues how it's going. Right, Kelly? How's it going? Because I know I've got a feeling you're going to be up here. I've spent three hours with her this <laughs> thing. I mean, I mean, you know, I need seatbelts sitting with her. So, I mean, it's like I'm Kelly Bahama and she's inspiring, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's really, it's, it's awesome. Right? Let's get together and share and build on each other's ideas. And then, you know what? Let's target next year. Let's be in the news. Let's be in the JAMA. Let's be out in the, in the health, uh, Healthcare Informatics Magazine and the Health Data Management and HIMSS and in Chime, which is already underway and planned for with a number of our colleagues. Let's be out in the news. Let's shake them up. Let's be the spark. I'm going to play a, a quick uh, recap of what happened in July. I'm probably going over a little bit. I, I had a little bit of passion behind this, but just to share with you some words.
uh, although they seem in an agenda to be uh, focused, it, it really they're not. And that's uh, actually indicative of the industry today. The healthcare industry transformation project, the HITP, is absolutely on the other end of the spectrum. This is a group of influential executives from influential healthcare organizations that indeed have a shared goal. And it can become effectively, again, once again, that spark that sets off the chain reaction across the industry that people fall in love with. I think this industry has acknowledged the need to change how we service healthcare for all Americans. You could throw a, 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 a dart at a spinning globe and get a higher value contribution than the United States. And that would be unacceptable. And so I'm looking forward to seeing it. Oh my gosh, we're going to have access to some of this critical um, recent information about me, the information that he or she needs to be able to take care of me uh, in the moment. And that's going to require some great technology uh, to empower them to do that. By 2025, it's said that 25% of our students grow up in the By 2030, the average family income will equal the average family outlay in terms of life. All the insurance premiums and how it's the best. None of those realities can actually happen. You have to move the ball from where we are so that those cataclysmic realities don't occur. And it's going to take informed people who are working in the cold face every day to think about those issues. So this is, this is not optional. This is not Healthcare is made up of so many different components. Uh, physicians, you have health plans, you have hospitals, you have technology uh, providers. Not all working in the same environment or in the same markets, but all with common goals and, uh, and purposes. And if you could ever get a big system view, uh, I think you can go a long way toward making big inroads in the healthcare. And, and I think at the end of the day, it's all about knowing what some of other other organizations are doing as a collective unit, and then trying to take those learnings and going back and applying those learnings in our own organization. But more importantly, there's a shared vision within the group to be able to take that vision, understand what it means, what it will from a technology, business process improvement standpoint, and then go back to our organizations and then do something about it. I think the application of that vision, I think that's what excites me about this group. stay active within, within a small group and actually do something. So one of our expectations with the uh, HITP was to create an environment where the executives of these healthcare organizations can sort of let their hair down, pretend there is a, a friction-free environment that indeed got a uh, change as it needs to occur. And I will say this, the energy level is beyond my expectation. Collaboration is just wonderful. I'm pretty inspired by how it's been embraced and uh, actually have a great expectation for uh, what this team's going to accomplish. So, that's the end of my opening remarks. Um, this is us. If you engage, if you will lift this idea and bring it to heights, and we all have in our hearts. So, thank you very much for listening and uh, Appreciate it. Hand it off to our co-sponsor, Tom Lloyd. Get us going. Thank you very much.